Yo, Mighty Mo Thugs. We ain't forgot about y'all. If you love Bone Thugs and Harmony, I'm sure you know about Mo Thugs. Mo Thugs was Bone Thugs' side posse, a large collective group of artists from their city, Cleveland, Ohio. Mo Thugs was considered a record label and a musical group. In the early 90s, they were one of the best side groups in the game. A lot of popular rappers at the time were trying to make their own side groups. Examples are like Biggie Smalls, Junior Mafia, Tupac, The Outlaws, but none of them really saw the success that Mo Thugs found. In this documentary, I'll be showcasing their successes as well as their demise. Check it out. The mid to late 90s, Bone Thugs and Harmony would dominate the rap industry. Hip hop fans had never heard such a unique flow mixed with such great harmonizing. Consumers were flocking to local CD stores to purchase every release even related to the group. 1996 was arguably their prime, and this same year they would release Mothog's first project titled Family Scriptures. Technically, Mothog's were signed to Relativity Records, so they weren't actually independent. The album peaked at number two on the Billboard chart and would receive a platinum certification on January 3rd, 1997. Family Scriptures featured over 25 different artists. The album contained two singles with music videos. The first was called Thug Devotion, featuring Crazy, Lazy Bone, Ken Dog, Trey, and Soldier Boy. It would reach the top 40 rhythmic chart and is redeemed as a cult classic to this day. second single was a smooth love ballad featuring Trey and Crazy Bone. It didn't receive the same success as Thug Devotion, but it's still a cool joint. Family Scriptures was filled with heavy hitters. Songs that stand out are Rumors and War and Player Enemy. The album's vibe was all over the place, but it aged well. Most Thugs had a very unique logo. It was a pyramid with a fist on top. The pyramid was meant to represent longevity, while the fist portrays victory. It's got projects, we got albums on top of albums on top of albums and all of them sweet. We happy to be here, we gonna take advantage of every opportunity that come our way. Shutting everything down, point blank. They straight our peoples from our hood, you know what I'm saying, where we grew up at, you know what I'm saying. When we first came with Mo Thug, you know what I'm saying, we went back to our hood and started with artists from right there from where we came from, you know what I'm saying, and eventually we branched out a little bit. We started Before the Hustle's like one of the first groups, you know what I'm saying, that signed Mo Thug. Yeah, they you know only been saying? there. Look, um, Tony Tone, Boogie Knight, Boogie um, Knight Mo Hart. Poetic Hustlers would be one of the first groups signed to Mo Thugs. They would first appear on the Shots to the Double Glock track from the Eternal album. A year after releasing Mo Thugs' Family Scriptures project, Poetic Hustlers would go on to release their only studio album titled Trials and Tribulations. The project would feature each member of Bone Thugs beside Busy Bone and would actually go on to appear on the US Billboard Top 100 chart peaking at 96 which was pretty impressive for a group with little to no promotion that was just releasing music under a Bone Thugs side imprint. Only one single and music video would be released. It was titled Day and Night, which featured Lazy Bone. My favorite track on the album is a song called Weekend Buzz, featuring Crazy Bone. I hooked up with my Bone Thugs and Harmony people like, we basically all grew up together the Lord put us together. It's stopped, but it's like a lot of hustler type stuff, like poetic. It stands for the like inner thought, you know what I'm saying? And the hustlers is the physical state. So if you could put that together, that basically explains poetic hustlers, you know. For Simon, much love to everybody all over the world. It's poetic hustlers, Mohawk. We'll be to see you. Projects would keep coming in '97. Female group Two True would release this project called A New Breed of Female. The album would fail to live up to expectations, peaking 194 on the Billboard Top 200 chart and falling off after just a couple weeks. It came with a music video for the first single called Ballers Flossing, which was a dope little track. My favorite song on the album is a weed smoker's anthem called So High, featuring Lazy and Crazy Bone. What's up? This Tombstone is seeing from the Graveyard Shift. You're watching the box. Music television you control. Graveyard Shift was next on deck. Still in the year 1997, Mothogs was set to release another album called Still Waters from their group Graveyard Shift. Unfortunately, the album would ultimately be shelved 
due to one of the members' tombstone being shot and killed. He's one of the members of the graveyard shift. You know what I'm saying? He uh, just got killed like a couple weeks ago. Shot in his head. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers don't know what the fuck happened. But shit. Motherfuckers just know he did. You know what I'm saying? Just some, just some real fucked up shit happened. Finally, 1997 would come to an end. The Mo Thugs Bone Thugs family were closer than they'd ever been. The losses and the success had really drawn them together, and it was clear that this group of people actually had love for each other, even considering each other family. Hence the title of their next album, Chapter 2, Family Reunion. We um, basically just came up with the concept as we went on, you know what I'm saying, and it came out lovely. Got it. the story, you know what I'm saying, really even the vision, the story as you listen to the song. It's just way of saying black cowboys, saying ghetto cowboys. I'm looking forward for us to stay original, just keep bringing new styles to the table. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. This is Mo Thugs coming at you with Ghetto Cowboy. Before Lil Nas X took you down the old dirt road, before Nelly and Tim McGraw told you over and over again, Mo Thugs hit you with Ghetto Cowboy, the first country crossover rap song ever. Ghetto Cowboy is the lead single for Mo Thugs from Family Reunion Chapter 2. Released in 1998 on Relativity Records, it features Lazy Bone, Crazy Bone, Powder P, Thug Queen, and Felicia. The single would peak at 15 on the Billboard Top 100 chart, also reaching the same spot on the Rap Hip Hop chart. It was certified gold the same year, selling 500,000 copies. It would also peak at number 87 on the Billboard Hot 100 singles for the year. Chapter 2 Family Reunion was a dope album, filled with great music. It was an awesome follow-up to the first compilation. And because of the success of the single Ghetto Cowboy, a lot of new fans were checking out Mo Thugs. The second single on the album was a track called All Good, featuring Felicia and Crazy Bone. It was a smooth love ballad that came with an expensive music video that appeared to be shot on some deserted secluded island, like a Mo Thugs paradise. Like I said, the project is tight. It features most of the same cast from the first compilation, but with a few new faces, and it's missing a couple. As the 90s would wind down, members of Bone Thugs would start to go their separate ways, experimenting in solo projects and other endeavors. Around this time, some of the original members of Mo Thugs would begin to grow bitter, feeling entitled to higher compensation because their last two compilation albums had been so successful. In actuality, Bone Thugs signed a very bad contract to begin with, and there wasn't much profit to go around. Not to mention, the main reasons of Mo Thugs was so successful was due to the Bone Thug contribution. Mo Thugs the brand would go on to be an entity owned by Flesh and Lazy Bone. While that may sound great, neither Lazy nor Flesh was really focused on Mo Thugs at this time. The truth was, Lazy was so disgruntled by disloyal members, he began to focus on his own career while reassembling Mo Thugs as a group signing a whole new era of 2000s artists. Flesh was also unable to focus because he was fighting for his freedom, facing a lengthy prison sentence. He loves guns. Every one of his offenses involves guns. There was another time House assaulted a neighbor in Chatsworth with a gun. His probation report calls him a ticking time bomb with alcohol, drug, and anger problems. A horrendous childhood. His attorney argued the rapper is the victim of an abusive upbringing with no father and a drug addict mother. Judge Darlene Shemp sympathized with his past, but ruled his future would include a 12-year prison sentence. I hope you understand what I had to do. Mo Thugs would be featured alongside Gerald Levert on a song called No Sense. Mo Thugs had the title track for the movie Held Up, which was a popular film featuring Jamie Foxx. Mo Thugs Volume 3, The Mothership, is the third album released. It was released on June 13, 2000 via Koch Records. 
The compilation would peak number 45 on the Billboard 200 and 13 on the R&B album chart. This project would see the departure of many Mothug artists, including Soulja Boy, Graveyard Shift, Poetic Hustlers, Too True, Powder P, and even Crazy Bone. As a result, most fans would consider this project a disappointment. The project contained two songs with music videos, two totally different songs. One is a murderous up-tempo joint, and the other is a love duet. Did He Really Wanna is my favorite of the two. The song had a very dark vibe, and the video was filled with killer graveyard scenes. The second video was for a song called This Ain't Living, which was a duet between newlyweds Lazy Bone and Felicia. Hands down, the most creative song on the album is a father-son collaboration between Lazy Bone and his son, J-Bone. The pair would go back and forth trading verses. You can tell Lazy really had to guide his son along and teach him how to flow. Nonetheless, the kid can rap, even as a preteen. The song is called The Backyard. Most Uggs would go on a three year hiatus without dropping a single album. Fans began to wonder if it was even still a thing. Yes, yes, indeed Mo Thugs still existed, because on June 10, 2003, a compilation project would drop titled The Movement, and talk about a roster change, and a whole new production team, consisting of DJ Marley T, Platinum Brothers, and Thin C. The most heavily featured artists were Immortal Thugs, Scant, Ken Dog, and Felicia. They contributed the most and really seemed to be the new faces for the brand. And for the first time in Mo Thug's history, this compilation would feature a high budget collaboration in Snoop Dogg. The song was called Smoking on Information. That, uh, Mo Thug, I mean, that's, that's my record label, right. you know, started back in like 96. Right. So far, I only, I only released nothing but compilations so right. far, but I got my artists finna hit the scene in right. 2002. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you know, Thug Line, that's Crazy Bones label. Right. He just formed his label, you know, I want to shout out Thug Line, all my dogs, artists. Right. Mo Thug, you know, that's just, that's, that's my baby, you know what I mean? Right. That's what I've been working on for the last two, three years. So, but the Thug and all comes back together for a new Bone Thugs and Harmony album. Flat out, it's, it ain't nothing but a Bone Thug Enterprise, <laughs> you know what I mean? We still got um, Felicia's album coming out. Hi, ah, Felicia! You okay. know, <laughs> doing, man, her album is off the hook. Is it? Off the hook. Okay. I got uh, Scat Bone coming out, Ken Dog. Uh, Immortal Thugs, right. you know, just the whole mo. I got the Mo Thug Four project coming out. Okay. So you know, we're doing our Keep thing at Mo Thug. You got the move. The early mid 2000s were a weird time for music. Consumers were no longer paying for the music they listened to. They were illegally downloading it. Social media was in its very early stages, but clout chasing was already on the rise. As it relates to Mothugs, different independent artists throughout the country began claiming affiliation to the label. Basically, random independent artists from everywhere were starting up their own Mothug sets. There was Mothug Detroit, Mothug South, Mothug West, Mothug East, and God knows what else. This made following the brand extremely difficult. It was hard to decipher which artist was legit and which was not. Bone Thugs as a brand were really starting to mount up a comeback during 2006-2007. Just in the nick of time too, because I really feel like during this period, the industry was starting to forget about Bone and the influence that they had originally brought. Unfortunately for Bone Thugs, they weren't getting the same recognition again. Their leader slash owner, Lazy Bone, was too focused on his group projects and doing side deals with labels like High Power. Then, out of nowhere, news would break that Lazy sold most of the patent and brand to an individual named Big Cass. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this is where their demise would truly start. Big Cass have been putting out records since 2000, um, been affiliated with Bone Thugs and Harmony since 98, took over the label in 2006. You know, people that are familiar with me, I'm the first artist ever to get a label deal with Sony, had a partnership with Mariah Carey. I'm that guy that, if you say Big Cass, is like, it's either yes or, but if you say Mo Thugs or Bone Thugs and Harmony, it's always, yeah, we know him. He's an owner, took over Mo Thugs when Bone Thugs and Harmony were really at the bottom. They're all my brothers, came in, got him their first deal again after being with a major to an independent, got him back with a major. You know Big Cass? 
Oh yeah. I, I never met. I, I don't think I ever met that weirdo. I think I met him. No, I saw him. Take that back. I do know the weirdo because I met him when I first came home, though. And he called you by your first name. Called me by my first name, and I really been trying to see him since then. Like he'll call on my first name, like you know me like that. Like nigga. Do you know him as a kid at Van Ness Park? Not at all. Do you know him from the streets? Uh, not at all. Do you know him from prison? Not at all. I know. I know him from coming home. They say he was a rapper. Okay, a few things you need to know about Big Cass. He was a California native who claims Crip. He served four years in prison for selling drugs, and he's known for buying old unreleased masters. He claims to own music from everyone from Tupac to Barbara Streisand, even Bruno Mars. Attempting a music career of his own, Big Cass has a lot of high-budget collaborations and features, but no hit music. This is when Mothogs stopped being about family and became more about profit than music. In 2007, Big Cass would release a compilation called Bone Box, Thugs for Life. It got no promotion pre-release, so fans didn't even know it was coming out. And to be honest, even if we would've known it was coming, we probably wouldn't have bought it. The project had music on it from artists that had zero affiliation with Bone. It was stupid. There were solo songs from artists like Loon and Ice Cube, and even a bunch of unknown artists. Not only that, but the album was flooded with whack verses from Big Cass. It was cool to see Lazy Bone and Ice-T on the same song, but of course Big Cass messed that up too. The best song on the project is a solo song from Lazy Bone, called Ride With Me, that features a dope Easy e sample. Besides that, this project is trash and a complete embarrassment. Big Cass would continue putting out cheap bullshit mixtapes. I'm not even going to talk about them because in my opinion, they just negatively reflect Mo Thug's legacy. Mo Thugs wouldn't make it to the 2010s. Lazy Bone would do a total revamp, starting completely over with his introduction of Harmony House Entertainment. And just like that, bam, it was over. Mo Thugs came from nothing, becoming something, then just vanishing like they were never even here.